You're listening to the Drumming News Network, drummingnewsnetwork.com, with your host, Paul Rodney. Welcome to the Drumming News Network podcast. I'm your host, Paul Rodney. In this episode, we cover some of the more popular stories that were featured from June 20th through June 31st. Please make sure to take a look at the stories that are mentioned in this episode by searching our website or by following the links in our show notes. Let's get on with the news. Tama releases the SLP limited edition 7 by 14 inch zebra wood snare drum. This limited edition Sound Lab project, or better known as the SLP 7x14 G Maple snare drum with the zebra wood outer ply, is built on the foundation of a thicker 11 mm 13 ply maple shell. It generates a bright sound with increased volume and sensitivity. The exotic zebra wood outer ply, coupled with the black nickel shell hardware, makes for a stunning appearance that simply demands attention. On June 20th, I posted a story of Peter Chris about a documentary that was made as an inside look of the former Kiss drummer. It's kind of cool. It's full of footage of Peter Chris, but the editorial in this documentary is fantastic. And it really tells a really good, complete story of the early era of Peter Chris. And as I understand it, this is a part one of part two. But what I'll do right now is play a little sample of what you'll experience when you watch the documentary. Along with being the first drummer, he also created the Catman image that Kiss still uses to this day. Peter Chris laid down the beats for what I consider the best music Kiss ever did. He was more of a flashy dresser than a flashy drummer. Peter joined up with Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons in the spring of 1972 to form what was to become the rock band Kiss. He was with them for eight years, leaving in 1980, coming back for a reunion tour in 1996, and leaving in 2001, 2002, and the final time in 04. Eric Carr may have been the best drummer of KISS, and Eric Singer has been with the band the longest, but Peter was the first, and will always be the Catman to most of the diehard fans. Peter's time with KISS was full of ups and downs. He had issues with drugs, alcohol, and women. He was always a bit high strung and a cocaine addiction just added fuel to his fire. Love him or hate him, Peter was the one who drummed Kiss to superstardom. So let's take a look back on his early life and then some of the early times as Kiss rose up and took the nation by storm. For all of you Latin drummers or people that are interested in Latin drumming, there's a very cool magazine called Latin Drummers Magazine. On the 21st of June, we posted a story for issue number 15. It features Walter Ariel Baum and Juan Paso. What's cool is that the magazine is normally printed as a free PDF download in Spanish, but they started recently producing an English version as well. Not all the issues are up to date in the English version, but nonetheless, uh, it's a fantastic magazine. It's a free download you know, you should check it out. Rototoms. It seems like there's a huge resurgence of rototoms right now. I've seen more and more people using them. And coincidentally, I actually got a complete set of rototoms myself, including a Pearl 1970s era um, very pitch snare, which is a um, six and a half inch bottom portion of a shell with a rototom on the top. And I got to say, man, it's, a, it's amazing uh, the, the sound of it. Anyways, what's really cool is on the 21st of June, we posted a video that Thomas Lang had done for the drum channel where he demonstrated his rototoms. And because he's such an amazing player, I figured what I'd do is I'd play a little extended version of that video here. But I really encourage you to go to our website to follow the link of the posted video um, from drum channel of him performing on his rototom setup. It's very, very cool. Check this out. A couple of months ago in one of the streams, I showed you some moves, some symmetrical moves, and uh, I want to just expand on that. Here is exercise number one. If you have five tom-toms, three up, two down, like I have here, let's just ignore these two over here. Try to play a nine stroke roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? Two strokes per drum. leading with the right hand descending, and then start on the first floor tom and play left hand lead ascending. 
and land on the snare drum. So that's a great exercise to get around the kit fast. And then you can sort of take this and scale it down, which is just seven strokes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're just skipping one of the tom toms. So. And switch between the nine stroke rogue and the seven stroke rogue. Five strokes. And experiment with those phrases. And then try uh, exercises like symmetrical rudimental exercises with orchestrations. Five stroke roll. Right, left, right, left, right. Then left, right, left, right, left. You can, of course, choose other toms, too. Descending five-stroke roll. Ascending five-stroke roll. So these are all singles. A nine-stroke roll with three tom-toms, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I, oh, by the way, yes, I put on little muffle rings on the tom-toms. They sound a little louder without the muffle ring. They don't sound much different, but I wanted a slightly shorter, uh, more muted sound. That's why I have uh, muffle rings on all the drums except for the six inch. <laughs> I really enjoy Thomas Lang's enthusiasm for drumming. He tries so many different things and has a really interesting YouTube channel where he does a lot of different drumming um, lessons, extended drum solos, and all these different drum sets that he tries out. Cannabis Drum Company has announced the launch of an e-commerce website for the U.S. Uh, I guess there has been difficulty getting a lot of Canopus... Am I saying that wrong? <laughs> I apologize, Canop Canopus, Canopus, whatever. Drum products in the U.S., I, I know they're a good quality company, but if you are looking to get some of their equipment, you can go to their website. And for non-U.S. countries where no Canopus, Canopus <laughs> dealer or distribution rep is represented, um, they're working on different e-commerce websites for uh, all the different countries right now. A decade after his passing, Paul Motion is still with us in a documentary, Motion, in Motion. Motion in Motion documents the career of iconic jazz drummer Paul Motion with rare fly on the wall footage of Paul in the studio at rehearsals and traveling to and from gigs as well as running in his beloved Central Park. We get to know Paul through archival footage and interviews with other legendary musicians such as Paul Freisel, Joe Lovano, Carla Blay, and Chick Corea. Paul Motion's sound and percussive presence, like the Hamnan in, in his name, represents energy in transit. As we observe a decade since his passing, he still feels present. His capacious music identity prompts the question, what was Paul Motion like in person? And just as Motion in Motion provides a rare peek into the life of the man himself, the documentary decided to check in with two longtime Motion associates, Chris Bell and Bro. To hear them tell it, the time they spent offstage with Motion yielded as many memories and information with their time with him in performance. I would encourage you to visit our website to watch this documentary. You get to learn so much about Paul and much of it from his own voice. So here is a sample of the documentary uh, that you'll be able to watch.
there's a sort of small number of great players in jazz who have the have the the bravery to do things in a kind of plain spoken way musically not without humor and wit and things like that but just to kind of boil things down to the essence and not overplay and not play fast and not play loud and you know Jim Hall can do that and Lester Young could do that and and uh, and Paul can do it he can develop the most lovely idea just with one cymbal and one drum and he also keeps making the beat different. Each beat is different, is phrased differently than the last one. So he's thinking his way through his playing and he doesn't waste anything. And that takes a kind of uh, honesty and bravery. And so I think of him in that sort of select company. I guess I first met him when he was playing with Bill, uh, Bill Evans. first came to New York or maybe even before that I can't I can't remember it was many many years so it's but the, the trio that Bill had with Scott LaFaro and, and Paul and uh, it was an extraordinary trio obviously it was the Bill Evans Vanguard uh, uh, recordings is where I, I didn't meet him back then but I, I certainly devoured those recordings like uh, a lot of musicians did there was a band leader named Jerry Wald who uh was having open auditions. He was putting a band together to go on tour. And I went to the audition, and Bill was there at that audition. I met him there. And when I walked into the room, Bill was, was playing the piano. And boy, when I heard that, my ears went up like this. I said, wow, this, this guy's great. I hope he gets the gig. I hope I get the gig. When he got his own group together, uh, he called me and asked me to play with him. Classical player. He was like a, a master, master craftsman, musically correct, harmonically and melodically. It was unbelievable. There wasn't anybody that was even close to him in terms of his ability to really, really know and understand what harmony was and what melody was. There's a lot of people, I guess, thought of him as being a real serious musician and stuff, which he was, you know, but he also had an incredible sense of humor. One time, I remember we were playing in this place with a bass player named Al Cotton. Three of us were playing, and uh, it was kind of boring. Nothing much was happening. So the bass player, Al, he said, hey, man, let's all just drop our pants and play. <laughs> I said, what, man, are you kidding? He said, no, OK. So we all dropped our pants, man. We <laughs> pants are down by our ankles, and we played. Boy, that music was swinging like a mug. <laughs> Paul Motion, who lived through the 50s and the 60s and up to now, seen the excesses, some of which were beautiful, and seen things get pared down again, and have learned the lessons of, um, you know, breaking all the rules so that they can see what's worth retaining. When I first came to New York, I found a lot of people trying to play free, but they weren't saying anything. I first met him in 1962. He was way, way beyond where I was. First thing you hear is that this guy is completely authentic. That's not something that you can learn. That's just something you are. Paul turned all of the conventional wisdom about playing the drums on its head. What to play and what to not play. The spaces that he would leave open you know, not playing the bass drum here, not playing anything, you know, for some number of beats and then laying something down. Well, all the other drummers were very concerned with the fulcrum and the wrist and the, and the fluency with which their arms moved. Paul just kind of picked up a stick and hit something. <laughs> and that was what was, in the end, what was really wonderful about the way he played was it was really just a guy hitting stuff. Creative Percussion releases their Rototom mount conversion hardware. A lot of the C-channel mount uh, of the existing Rototoms 
is difficult to mount your drums, and it's hard to find replacement hardware, let alone quality stands. So what they've done is offered a Pearl-style L-arm that mounts onto the 7 8 arm of a, of a Pearl arm, and then the threaded uh, rod that normally goes into Rototom, you just remove the existing one, put in theirs, and it's seamless, and it mounts fantastically to existing drum sets. And if you have a rack setup, or you want to use multi-clamps, they have a hex bolt version as well. So the bottom portion is a hex bolt with that threaded rod coming out of it that you re-thread right into your existing Rototom. And again, you have tons of flexibility to mount these. It's, it works fantastic. So check it out. In electronic news, D-Drum releases the DD-NIO, the ultimate percussion pad. It features nine isolated rubber pads, two dual trigger inputs, two switch pedal inputs, quarter-inch headphone output, Quarter-inch stereo outputs left and right with volume control, eighth-inch stereo auxiliary input, USB output, five-pin MIDI in and out, 30 preset kits, five are D-Drum series kits, 20 user kits, 608 total sounds, and 512 megabytes of storage for loading samples or loops. There's a cool demonstration that a drummer uses in a video that we posted where he uses this pad setup to actually play as an independent set. So you can use the pedals that are provided as a hi-hat and also a bass drum. With the two pedals that are included, you can use one of them as a hi-hat clutch pedal, as well as the other one as a bass drum pedal. Uh, so you can actually just practice on yourself with this pedal independently. Otherwise, you can pre-record loops and play to your loops, or you can just use it as a sample trigger pad. It's just a really, seems like a really versatile unit. So make sure to check that out if you're looking for expanding your electronic voice. The British Drum Company welcomes Jerry Brown to their family. I don't normally announce endorsements on the podcast, but this is Jerry Brown, so I figured I had to mention this one. He's just such a legendary player. There's a cool video he posted that was filmed by Drum Center Portsmouth. They released a video of Gary auditioning three British Drum Company snare drums. Because I love hearing drummers, and it's the great Gary Brown, I will be playing an excerpt from that video. Now, the, the excerpt is about six minutes long. It's primarily of him talking and auditioning these drums. So if you're not interested in hearing it, just fast forward about six minutes and you can pick up after the video. I received a uh, note from the folks at British Drum Company. Uh, Mel over there actually reached out and said, hey, um, you know, we, we, we're talking to Jerry Brown. We, we'd like to have him try out some snare drums. Can he come up? And and I wrote back and I just said, V, Jerry Brown? I said, yeah, yeah. So we connected and went through a, a half a dozen or more British Drum Company snare drums, which I tuned this morning based on, you know, listening to your recordings. I tried to get as close as I could to where I think you would want it and decided to audition a bunch of snare drums. How many people would do that? It, it just made the process so easy. I would say from the snares that you put out, I made that choice probably in about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. We were hoping to narrow it down to two, but it was really, we settled on three. I know, the three amigos. The names are Nicarus, or the Icarus. Yep. Nicarus is just like Nico McBrain, it's bold. And when, you, when I played it, you could almost see Nico smile. Oh! Yeah, it, it, you play that, it's like you could almost see Nico smile. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, my God.
and Marcy, and that's for the Merlin, mm -hmm. because very, very sexy and snappy. Just a little thing, but so expressive. Marcy. And I'm not even, I'm just barely tapping it, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah. it's, got, it's got a presence, man. Mm -hmm. it's like. And then there's Miss Bluebird. Yeah, Miss Bluebird. It's encompassing a extreme beauty and a fullness. So those are the three. You know, I will absolutely groove responsibly on all three. I promise you that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. British Drum Company is making a name for themselves quickly. A few years ago, I was able to try one of the drum sets, and I was completely impressed. They look beautiful. They sound beautiful. There's a high quality of manufacture. They kind of came out of nowhere when I was introduced to them. I, I just I had never heard of them, and I thought they were really cool. I don't know anybody really who owns the set except for a, an acquaintance of mine. Um, he's the renowned drum tech, Brad Marsh, uh, who has worked with Prince, Bobby Z, Michael Bland, Sheila E., and for the last 20 years or more uh, with Phil Collins as his drum tech. And uh, he received it, loves it, and it's his number one go-to set when he performs live. It's one of the few companies that are out now that I think are really offering something unique. I'm excited to learn more about this company. They really seem to be doing the right things to make a uh, quality company. Roma introduces new additions to their concert series line of drumsticks. Roma is expanding their concert series with five new models. 
Two of these models were developed with the principal drummer of the Munich Philharmonic, Arnold F. Reedhammer. Forte, mezzo, and piano are the names of the new models in the Roma concert series. The same stick lengths, diameters, and geometries of the shoulder area should allow easy changing of the drumsticks within a piece or a concert. The differences are limited to the different weights and head shapes. Roma uses particularly dense hardwood for these models with a two-stage oil wax finish which is intended to increase the grip of the stick. Two of the concert models were developed together with Arnold F. Reedhammer, who can draw on 45 years of experience as a solo percussionist with a Munich Philharmonic. The German company was founded in 1888 by Robert Hillinger. To maintain a high level of quality with their stick manufacturing, they use innovative and automated processes ensuring the highest quality of stick. Make sure to visit Roma.com. Zoom releases their new field recorder, F3. Zoom releases a lot of good quality uh, field recorders, and I have to say this one is pretty remarkable. It's very small, very portable. You can use it just about any way you want. You get multiple plugins from XLRs to, I think, quarter inch as well. It's a great little device to have wherever you need it. Two cool features about this product is that it can wirelessly be controlled by your Apple or uh, Android device, and you don't have to worry about clipping with this device. Oftentimes, it's, it's difficult to record rehearsals or independent rehearsal to hear playback to see how you're playing, and this is a great device for that. So um, check it out. Maybe this will be a good one for you. Kind of an interesting story I posted. It's an article with Matt Sorum. Uh, he looks back at drumming for some of the biggest bands in history. Matt Sorum has seen it all. If not all, well, then he's seen a lot. From his days growing up as a hustler in Long Beach, getting entangled in the drug trade, Sorum not only made it out alive, but drummed for some of the biggest monsters of rock. No one else can boast a resume that includes stints with the cult, Guns N' Roses, Velvet Revolver, and a stint with the Hollywood Vampires. These days, Sorum is living the good life out in the Southern California desert with his wife and young daughter. But while there, he found time to write his autobiography, Double Talk and Jive, true rock and roll stories from the drummer of Guns N' Roses, The Cult, and Velvet Revolver. It took him and two writers four years to get it done, which was greatly slowed by the pandemic. This is a real introspective book um, about a drummer who many of us have heard of, have seen, maybe even seen play, and definitely a book you should check out. This seems really interesting. D-Drum releases the Vinnie Paul Signature Stick Bag. Snakeskin Stick Bag, that is. Legendary groove metal drummer Vinnie Paul has made a living pummeling audiences around the world on whatever stage he played with Pantera, Hell Yeah, and Damage Plan. To honor the great drummer, D-Drum is proud to offer the Vinnie Paul Stick Bag, finally a bag worthy and authentic enough to be graced with his name on it. Featuring a snakeskin outer cover, the Stick Bag is deluxe-sized with four sleeves for sticks, two inner pockets for storage, and two outer pockets for storage. It also includes the Vinnie Paul badge on the front and signature logo inside. This is a follow-up to a story that was kind of big news for a while about Travis Barker, who was hospitalized for pancreatitis following his colonoscopy. What was scary about it is, is there were some nondescript messages that were put out by himself and his family, first of which was on Instagram, he posted, God save me. And later his daughter took to Instagram asking for prayers and posted a number of photos of him entering the hospital and holding his hand in the hospital. So for a long time, many of us were really worried about what was going on and really didn't have a lot of information. But the good news is that the pancreatitis was triggered by his colonoscopy, uh, which is interesting, which is kind of scary. But for the most part, these things do not happen, so make sure to go out and get checked because, you know, there are a lot of young people that, that are dying from this right now, too. So make sure to get your, your check just to be safe. Uh, but he quickly recovered and is now doing much better and is back at home. And finally, we have the news that Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Experience Tour started on June 24th. Now, the June dates are done, but there are more shows taking place in August and then again in December. But what I'd recommend is between now and then, go to his website to see if there are any other additional shows uh, that are going to expand this tour even further at jasonbonham.net. And this concludes our episode where I feature some of the more popular posts that we've had over the last few weeks. 
Please visit drummingnewsnetwork.com daily for all the latest drumming news. You can also subscribe to our RSS feed to continually keep up to date as the news happens. You can also follow us on our different social media sites, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And we ask that you help to spread the word about this podcast and website. So thank you kindly for your time. And until next time, keep drumming. This has been a production of the Drumming News Network. All rights reserved. All media is owned by the respective parties. This episode cannot be distributed or copied in any form. Please visit drummingnewsnetwork.com daily to keep up on all the latest drumming news. Copyright 2022.